Hi guys, welcome to the Lore Studios. This is a bumper package on Kotlin development. We're going to be creating a web app and the popular movies to demonstrate on how to use Kotlin to develop Android applications. Kotlin has come to stay. It's a first-hand programming language to develop Android applications in Android Studio. We'll be talking about some usefulness of Kotlin. Kotlin is compatible, compatible with JDK 6, that's Java JDK 6. Uh, which uh, you could develop Kotlin uh, for Android projects uh, to support older Android devices. Uh, it has a very fast performance. Uh, it's as fast as any Java application and it is interoperable in the sense that you could actually write Java and Kotlin together in the same class. Uh, you could declare a Java class and also a Kotlin our project together and it's going to work perfectly without glitches. Uh, it has a fast compilation time in which uh, you could compile uh, at a very fast fast pace uh, without any uh, lag and it's actually uh, optimized. And the learning curve for Kotlin is uh, very, very steep. Uh, Java developers can pick up Kotlin and understand it within uh, minutes. So it's something that is actually uh, good uh, to pick up for any developers whatsoever. And uh, we're actually going to be looking at some core functionalities in Kotlin, like the classes and functions. I'll be talking about how to retrieve our data from the web services or API, and how to parse JSON, how to display that to the UI, how to create a detail page, uh, all using Kotlin in this series. So don't go anywhere, stick by, we'll get it started. Welcome back. We're actually going to be creating a Kotlin project. But before you do that, you will need Android Studio. And I will implore you to uh, install Android Studio version 3 and above because that have Kotlin embedded out of the box with it. Uh, but if you don't have the version, you can also use uh, Kotlin, but you need to uh, integrate a plugin, which uh, you actually get from your preferences. Just search for Kotlin, uh, install the plugin, and restart the Android Studio. You're going to have Kotlin to use. Uh, if you are have this version, you could actually follow along with me on how to set up Kotlin in an Android uh, Studio project. So you're going to start a new project, a new Android Studio project. So let's name the project. Let's just give it Kotlin Android. Now, uh, at default, you don't have the include Kotlin support checked. But if you notice this just the way it is, uh, you need to check the Kotlin support so that you're going to have uh, the Kotlin uh, integrated into your project. And uh, after that, you move to next. Also, we're going to be developing for API 15 and above. You move to next. Uh, you up for an empty activity, you move to next. We have the activity that has been activity and the layout is called activity main. So you finish up uh, this uh, project. We're actually going to be including a dependency called Anchor. So what is Anchor and what uh, uh, does Anchor have for us? Anchor is actually very useful and uh, it's uh, going to help us to uh, move around uh, the Kotlin project uh, on Android SDK seamlessly, uh, which uh, you, you're going to be including uh, into uh, this uh, project. So Anchor is very, very useful. It has a store library from JetBrains uh, that makes uh, you working with uh, Kotlin projects uh, or Kotlin uh, syntax easy uh, with the Android SDK. So we're actually going to be including that in the build gradle. Let's move to the build gradle, uh, gradle script, the build gradle model app. We'll start from the project, the build gradle project, and we're going to be including the extension. We're going to have it as extension dot and Anchor version at the point of recording, the version will be using is 0.10.8. Cool. I uh, will move back to the build gradle where well, we'll need to include uh, our auto dependency, the implementation uh, from the JetBrains. So we're going to, let me just bring this down for us to have more space to work with. Uh, we're going to have a dust way. Let's do it immediately after the appropriate support implementation. We're going to have it as 
our hog. Go to check brace. And uh, we go to our put hand cog. Go to our hand cog. Come on. And we will declare with the dollar sign with the anchor version. Version. So we're going to actually sync Gradle and get our application ready to start up. So we're going to be looking at some uh, salient points when it comes to uh, working with coupling. Coupling is expressive, uh, it takes care of null safety, and uh, it's actually uh, extension functions, and you could use the functional support of lambdas. So we're going to actually cover that in this introduction. Uh, we'll be talking about its expressiveness. I will be creating two Java classes, which we two classes rather, one Java, the other in coupling, just to uh, just to compare uh, the two different syntax and the boilerplate that Java has, uh, which Kotlin has actually uh, taken care of. Java will call movies, and for coupling, we're creating another coupling class, uh, which we call movie. All right. Cool. Now we we'll start with uh, the Java. So in the Java, which is uh, the movie, which is the movies, we'll be creating some fields. Firstly, we have a private noun an ID, model one, private string, name, another one, private. URL, not the one, having string, MBID. Cool. Now we're going to create a certain getter. It will just do that throughout. But these are all boilerplates you need to set up when you're creating a kind of model in Java. And uh, cool. You could also have the whole string. Which uh, you need to concatenate a lot of stuff together to form uh, the two string, which we will provide as a two string. But Kotlin is going to take care of all that, and let's see how it's going to look when you talk it, when we're dealing in Kotlin. It's going to be very short and expressive. We're going to have our data class. We call it movie, and we declare the values var. And it's the other type long plus comma. Second one is name and the string. Third one URL. That's also a string. The last BID. String. So simple and expressive. You could see how short, short and, uh, you could do when uh, you actually dealing with uh, coupling. And if you should notice, the data class auto generates all the fields and property accessors, uh, as well as some useful methods such as the whole string, which I talked about, which you need to declare when you're dealing with Java. Uh, you also get the equals, the hash code. And uh, all for free, which are very valuable and can be dangerous if they are incorrectly implemented. So you should uh, have that at the back of your mind. Now let's just create our function to print stuff. So now for this case, so we have a form. We'll call it print. So this is just basically going to print uh, some stuff for us and you have it set up. So that's cool. That's for expressiveness. Uh, Kotlin is uh, very expressive. And we'll look at the null safety. 
uh, when we use Java, a significant amount of our code is the fencing. We need to check once and another whether something is wrong before using it to prevent unexpected null pointer exception. Coupling, like many other modern languages, is not safety because the type is explicitly defines whether an object can be null by using the same call operator. That's when you use your question mark. So we can do this. Let's do it together. We're going to actually declare this method create method in our main activity uh, to check for the null safety. Now we have a class called the movie, which we could interact with. Uh, so this will not compile because movie cannot be null. Let's see. This will compile. Did you see what? Because movie can be null. So let's see what will compile. We could declare var. So we could just say, you know this, uh, just say movie. That's a problem because movie can't be null. You get it. So now, uh, let's make this work because movie can be null. So now we're going to do var an object movie movie, which you're going to have as uh, movie. Now let's introduce our question mark to tell that it could be null. This will run. So that's the best way to declare a movie object. So let's see another one. When we're trying to print out, this will not compile uh, when we're going to print out this way because movie could be null and we need to deal with it. So this will not compile. Won't compile. Because movie could be null. Well, printing. So now let's try to print. Just call it movie object. The print statement. Look at it. We have an error. It won't compile. So let's make this work. Let's make it work. We need to just declare. What we declare our movie? Just add question mark. Call your print statement. Voila. That's all. You could also use the smartcast that we used to. Use the smartcast. While dealing with Java class, when we call E, we could say movie is not equal to null. You get Get that ideology, or oh, so now you can now use move because that maybe is not going to be null. Cool. We could also do it this way. Another way. Uh, you could call movie. This time, use the exclamation. And you print out. Fine. All is going to work. So, you're dealing with null safety, which causes a lot of problem when I write in Java class, using Java. Now, let's look at the extension functions. Thanks to the extension functions, we can add main functions to any class. It is clean a substitute for the common utility classes we all have in our projects in Java. Uh, you could, uh, for instance, add a new method to fragments. To show a toast when we call the upper class, utility class, and things like that. Now let's have a helper uh, called, uh, it's going to be to make a toast. Now this toast is actually going to be, because a fragment class, is a fragment, it's about four, version four, to call the toast. Now we're going to pass in the parameters needed. First is the message. 
that's 10. It's going to be a correct sequence. So I'll speak in the tag. The second is going to be the duration. Uh, this time we're going to code this to be uh, short. Dot length short this way of code. Now uh, we should have a ghost in there to make text. Uh, we pass in the activity and uh, the message followed by the duration. One more thing to show the ghost. Now we're going to use this in a class. We could just very simple using toast. You could just call toast directly and pass in your message. Hello guys. What's up? Voila. That's all. You have nothing else to declare. Let's talk about functional support when talking about lambdas. Uh, what if, if uh, you have to declare an anonymous class every time? You will need to implement a click listener. You could just define what you want to do, and uh, indeed, uh, the rest is going to be history. So let's try to set up this. Now I'm going to give this an ID or activity in Windows text view. So we're going to hit your click listener on this. Let's give it an ID. Call it text. So I'll be showing you on how to make reference to IDs from your class or from your friends when it comes to using Kotlin. Now let's make reference to this. I'll just download this data. So I'm going to call var. Let me just give it an identifier. Let's layout. Oh, too much space over here. I'm going to call the Kotlin find and the generic that listen to view and will point to its ID. Text. Cool. So we import that. Import text. Now let's hit the listener on that. Text layer does set. Let's click listener. Pick this other one. Have the color brace. So from here we could toast. I'm just passing the message. So the rocking lambdas. Cool. Voila. That's all. So you could see how coupling will be very useful for us. It helps. It's expressive. There's no safety. Uh, extension functions that are available. Uh, you could actually integrate lambdas without much hassle, and things will actually work as expected. So I would plan to stick by with the Larry Studio. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot to talk about when it comes to coupling. Uh, we did a full series. We'll be looking at the nitty gritty of coupling throughout uh, the uh, playlist. In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about classes and functions, uh, where we get to declare coupling classes, and uh, where we take to, to, to use its functions, which we call metal in Java. Don't go anywhere. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this video. Catch me up in the next tutorial. Bye bye for now.